Hello everyone, today's video is an introduction to digital forensics. So when a, an organization's network is breached, one of the first and the most common things that uh, we all do is to resolve that incident quickly. But in critical or large organizations, cybersecurity professionals adhere to digital forensic procedures before resolution of that particular incident. So digital forensics is a branch of forensic science that focuses on identifying, preserving, acquiring and processing and presenting that digital evidence in a court of law. To put uh, digital forensics in a, another simple way, cybersecurity technical tasks can be divided into three sections. The first one is the offensive side, then comes the defensive and the third one is digital forensics. So digital forensic teams focuses on using a scientifically proven uh, or accepted and validated process to conduct investigations while preserving the digital evidences to find out exactly what has happened during an incident. Since cybersecurity incidents are very uh, common and increasing today, organizations either have an in-house forensic digital forensic team or an outsourced team so there are different organizations to handle uh, digital forensic investigations there can be private organizations uh, public or government organizations as well as law enforcement authorities to handle such cases usually these teams which include a computer forensic investigator or a forensic analyst they are specialized to conduct such investigations and they are people who has knowledge on internal structure of many different file systems. Uh, many different file systems in the sense file systems from different versions of different operating systems and different devices. So the specifically trained professionals who work with law enforcement authorities also and they also uh, work with private uh, organizations to retrieve information from computers and other types of storage devices uh, to help in investigations. There are few main points during a digital forensic procedure. First point is the data collection phase. This phase mainly includes a, a process to obtain uh, the search authorities or search warrants or seizing the actual evidences and also documenting the chain of custody is also involved in this uh, step. In the second step, which is acquiring and processing, we have to validate the tools and also obtain the hash of the evidences uh, and also to make the copy of evidences before we go into the analysis. So the third step is the analyzing phase. Here we perform the analysis according to the uh, investigation and we also verify this uh, output with other tools. Then it's the fourth point which is reporting. Reporting uh, includes documenting all the findings and also making conclusions. Making conclusions in the sense we are not making any judgments or we are not giving a result on the case but we are only making conclusions on our findings. And the third point is presenting as an expert witness. An expert witness is a person who has specialized skills and uh, knowledge, experience on a particular field. And their opinion will help a judge or the lawyers to understand about the evidences that were being found uh, on the particular case. The fifth point is the preservation. A preservation uh, option is there to protect the evidences from unintentional damage to that evidence. Uh, damage can happen due to various factors including mishandling of the evidence. So there are a few branches of digital forensics. Uh, first one is computer forensics where we investigate hard disks and virtual drives of a particular machine. And then comes network forensics where we focus on analyzing the network traffic and then the mobile forensics where smartphones and other mobile devices are being investigated. Digital forensics is a very important part in uh, information technology field. Uh, without digital forensics, evidences can be damaged, corrupt or it can also be unnoticed and your organization can be vulnerable to attacks after an incident if a thorough digital forensic 
investigation has not taken place. So this is the end of the first video of the Digital Forensics series. This was the introduction and I am hoping to cover the autopsy tool in the next video by also covering some of the steps that I have mentioned above. Hope this video was useful. So thank you for watching.